LSU head football coach Ed Ogeron on the Subway Fresh Take. Player interviews uh, across the street in the team room at 115. Uh, media uh, viewing at practice for 15 minutes today at 453. And then on Thursday, we're going to have a tour of some of our new areas in Tiger Stadium for you guys. Uh, so I'll send out an email uh, so you all can come have lunch with us. But uh, we'll give you all the Skyline Club and some other areas. So uh, if you can silence your phone and raise your hand if you have a question, we'll get a mic to you. Coach? Welcome, media. Good to see everybody on Competition Tuesday. Hope you had a great day off yesterday. It's coming off a good team win versus BYU. We're very pleased with our preparation going into the game by our coaches and our players in a very focused group the whole week and the whole trip down there. You can just tell before the game that they were ready to play. And for that, we're pleased. And uh, they believe it in the preparation and the hard work. I got to thank Tommy Moffitt for the great job he did with our guys over the summer. And into camp, they were in good shape. Uh, we came out the game pretty healthy. We were very physical, and I got to thank him. We are bigger, stronger, and faster because of the job that Tommy Moffat and his excellent strength staff did. We're proud that we started two, five true freshmen and played 17 freshmen, uh, and they did pretty well. And this is a, a, a fantastic freshman group, and we're going to continue to play those guys, and we're going to continue to grow with them. Uh, some. Positives from our offense, first thing is about the ball, zero turnovers and zero sacks. Very proud of that. The great job by offensive line, Coach Grimes. Uh, good job by Matt Canada calling the game, the protections, and us protecting the football. As you know, we had 41 minutes and 54 seconds time of possession. We only punted one time. Uh, Danny Etlin, we thought, played fantastic in managing the game. His passes were on the money. He made great decisions. He was 14 out of 17 for 171 yards. We ran the ball for almost 300 yards. It was a physical football game. We took what they gave us. Our wide receivers caught the ball well. We had seven different players catch a pass and run with the football. I think it's the first time in a long time that LSU has done that. We're very proud of our play-action game. The things that we want to improve on and need to improve on, obviously, as you all know, is red zone efficiency. We made some mistakes down there. We've got some different plays that we need to call, and we're going to work on that very hard this week, and we want to eliminate the penalties that we had, especially at the beginning of the game. On defense, again, another great job by our pre preparation. Our coaching staff, led by Dave Aranda, who was one of the best in the business, an outstanding performance by the defense. Started four, four true freshmen, 97 total yards of offense, minus five rushing, the shutout just uh, – just a tremendous job on defense, and uh, we're going to continue to improve. We had a lot of guys play well, but everybody fit. We had all 11 doing their job most of the time. That's what we're most proud of. The things that we must improve on defense are communication, and we want to create more turnovers. On special teams, the positive was substitution. Our goal was to put 11 men on the field and fight like Tigers, and we did that. We had a 32-punt return by D.J. Chark. And uh, that was a nice play in the ball game. Set us up in great field position. We stopped the fake punt on fourth and one. We have a punt safe. Our guys did a tremendous job. Great situational awareness there. Uh, the blocking on the kickoff return was outstanding. Uh, Darrell caught the ball, and uh, obviously it was, should have been Clyde's ball. We'd like to see what Clyde would have done with it. Outstanding freshman. We're going to get better at that this week. Our field goal protection was good. They had blocked many kicks for that number 90, that 6'9 guy. Uh, Jeff worked very hard on our guys and didn't allow any penetration. Must improve kickoffs. We want our kickoffs into the end zone. Our kickoffs were not what it's supposed to be. We're going to op open up the competition for who's going to kick off this week. Uh, we're going to make some changes there. Uh, kickoff coverage, lane assignments. We're going to make some changes on the personnel that we had on kickoff. We're not happy with the kickoffs. We're not happy with our assignments. So we're going to improve in that area and we don't want to have any penalties on the special teams. Now, our challenge this week is to press on. We want to press on towards Chattanooga. Uh, we're coming off a good win. We're coming off a team that's coming into our house, and we need to focus totally on them. We're looking forward to playing in Tiger Stadium, our first home game. I want to encourage the fans to get their tickets now. A sold-out crowd would be great for our, our young team. They, they come here expecting a sold-out crowd for Tiger Stadium. I know we're going to get it. I know that the Tiger Walk is going to be fantastic with the former players there. I just can't wait to walk into that stadium with our new team on Saturday night. 
Uh, on to Chattanooga. Uh, as we know, they lost to Jacksonville State 27-13. That's the film we've been studying. Tom Marth is their coach. He was a backup to Peyton Manning in the NFL. He's a very good coach. He has very good schemes. Uh, we're studying them right now, especially his offensive schemes. Uh, on offense, they multiple. We've seen a spread. We've seen pro style. It was mainly spread versus Jacksonville State. Uh, we don't know what we're going to get. We're ready. Uh, Justin Raschetti is their first season at Chattanooga. He was at OC at Tennessee Tech, so obviously we've been studying his film too, not knowing what we're going to get, but I do believe we're going to be prepared. They have four returning starters. They had 300 yards versus Jacksonville State, scored 13 points. Their top players are Richard Bagley, running back, just Joseph Parker, wide receiver, and Nick Tiana, a big, big quarterback. He had 23 passes for 218 yards, a touchdowns, two interceptions with Jackson State, and also can run the ball. On defense, we're expecting a 3-4 defense to give us multiple looks. That six returning stars for 2016, they gave up 366 yards, Jacksonville State, and 27 points with Jacksonville State. Their top players are Tavon Lawson, linebacker, Tate Davis, linebacker, and Isaiah Mack, D-line. On special teams, their kickoff, they're averaging – 19.2 yards on the kickoff return. The net point average is 37.5. Their field goal specialist, Victor Umo, was 2-2 two two on field goals. Solid football team. It's not going to be about them. It's going to be about us. Today is competition Tuesday. We focus on our preparation. We're looking forward to getting out there, being out in the heat today in the sun. It's a beautiful day in South Louisiana. We're excited about going to practice today. Any questions? Hey, Coach, <clears throat> you uh, complimented your offensive line. Can you share any grades, like with specific guys? And also, uh, the guys that missed the game with suspension, do they go right back to where they were? Or is there any lingering effect on deciding when those guys play? Yeah, we, we thought our guys graded out pretty good. You know, most of them grade out in the high 90s, which is awesome. Uh, we had a couple guys make some mistakes. You know, we know the new young guys were going to make mistakes. I thought the young guys played fantastic for their first game. The older guys help them out. You can hear them on the sideline, help them making their calls and stuff. So I thought the offensive line played great. Obviously, there's some things that Jeff wants to fix. But you know what? We had a we had a mixed bag unit all camp, and Jeff did a great job of keeping those guys healthy. They played. They stayed healthy. Uh, the guys that didn't play this week are going to work, back, work their way back. We're not going to make that decision right now. That can go all the way up to game time. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Darius guys carried the ball 20 times in the first half of the night, 13 in the first quarter. Was that by design? Was that a bit too much? Or did I, I mean, what, what was ideal for for you for him? Yeah, you know, you know, I think any time you get over 25 is too much because we have we have three four backs that can run the football. We don't want to wear them out, but I do believe it was what they was giving us. We wanted to give Darius the ball on the first play on the fly sweep, and that we thought that was a very good play as something that can gain some yardage. Uh, I don't think that you're going to see Darius carrying the ball over 25 times in, in, in or 30 times in a game every game. We don't want to wear them out. Hey, Coach, at your coach's show, you were asked what was the difference between being the interim head coach and being the uh, the permanent head coach. And you said you coached the same on the outside, but you were going to feel different yeah. on the inside. What was the experience like of leading LSU into the a season it, it opener? Was, it was great. Uh, you know, just focusing on the preparation of a Saturday morning, I woke up. I was a little nervous for the first time. And uh, I wanted the team to play well. And I knew we had a new offense, new special teams. There was a lot of uh, new working parts that were going on during the game. Uh, so those things were important to me. Uh, the first time that Matt calls games, I'm on the headsets with him. And, you know, we're doing the uh, game time communication with him. Uh, we got a lot of things going on. We got a lot of new freshmen playing. We don't know what's going to happen. What what BYU is going to do to us? So there was a lot of anxiety inside, but it didn't show it at all. Remain calm. Our guys were fired up. I, I believe that uh, the the team gives you confidence when you see the way they prepare, and you see them right before a game. I knew we were ready to play. I knew we were going to play well. <clears throat> Down here on the left. Uh, after you watched film, what did you think of? Your freshmen on defense, Chase on Taylor, Delpit, Vincent, some of those guys who started and, and played a lot. Recruit, recruit, recruit. <laughs> We're glad we have them. 
They're exactly what we thought about in recruiting. Uh, you know what? The thing that I was really impressed with the most was their mental outlook on the game. The game was not too big for them at all. They were running around ready to go. They didn't have the deer in the headlights look at all. They were ready to go. They played like vets. Uh, I thought they graded out very well. You know, Grant Delvin started off with that play. Tyler Taylor Tell on that power. Caleb Bond did his assignments exactly like we wanted. Uh, Kerry went in there and played a great job on nickel. They all did a fantastic job. Good straight ahead. Uh, you, uh, DJ Chark back there on, on punts, yeah. uh, you had said uh, Dante Jackson would be there. Right. The reason for the, the switch, and, and right. will that be the case going forward? Yeah, we, we felt that ball security for our first game, ball security was of utmost importance, and we felt that he had the best ball security out there. We did it. <laughs> it's his first time doing it in a game, but we knew that he was going to catch the football. We felt that he, he had better ball security skills, and that's why we did it. We'll see. You know, we always want Dante to go there. Dante is a game breaker, you know what I'm saying? But uh, we just got to get him comfortable and catching the ball the way we want him to. And once he does that, we're going to be in good shape. A lot of talk about the young guys on defense, uh, but the 60 year senior, Corey Thompson, coming out with a couple oh. of sacks. Yeah. Uh, what kind of value does he bring to that side of the ball? Speed. And Corey's very strong. He's strong. He's strong at the point of attack. You know, we ran a little, a little stunt where we looped him across the center changed direction, reached out to grab the quarterback, very strong and quick. Uh, you know, he and Kelevon was good off the edge. When we get when and when we get Arlen Key back on on that team, we're going to have what we call a cheater team. We're going to have a very good pass rush system. Corey does a good job. He did a good job of taking care of his pass rush responsibility. He did a good job on the first play. They ran a power. He played with leverage, came across and made the play. He used his hands well. He has to stay healthy. That's the one thing with Corey. He, he's faced a lot of adversity through injuries, which is not his fault. We feel that he can stay healthy. He can have an outstanding season. Ed, over here on the on the side, you mentioned when you get Arden back, is he still waiting to be cleared for contact? Yeah. And what's his mm -hmm. participation yeah. been like? He's still waiting to be cleared for contact. We're going to do a little bit more with him today. I want to see what he can do. Uh, he'll He'll get a little more. Contact today as far as repetitions. Uh, I don't know if he's full speed yet, but we're bringing him along in increments. He is not ready to play. He's not being cleared to play for a game yet. Ed, uh, talk a little bit more, if you would, about um, the, the pregame, leading the team down the hill, leading him into the stadium. The first game is always a little special. Yeah. And why was it important to you to want to add the, the former players yeah. uh, you know, coming down the hill with you? Look, I grew up watching LSU football. And uh, just just being around those guys and seeing them play in Tiger Stadium, I think it gives us all motivation. It all gives us a sense of family. I want them to bring want them to bring them back. You know, at Miami, we brought back all the players. They were always there. At USC, Marcus Allen would be on my side. You know, all the great players would come back. They'd be in the dressing room. I remember playing against Notre Dame. We're going down the tunnel. Ron Yeri is screaming in the tunnel. Uh, I just remember uh, Jerome Brown and them calling Cortez Kennedy and all before the game. And I think that that's a great uh, tradition that LSU can have. And we brought all the guys back. Uh, they're going to be back again. Uh, our guys love having them around. Uh, we brought some of the greats back. Derek brought Tommy Casanova, uh, all, the, all the great ones back. Uh, and they talk to the team. And I just think it gives us strength and unity and makes them feel important. Because they bled the purple and gold. Ed, right. Um, it, could you address, address a couple of things? Uh, you've split out J.D. Moore and Foster Moore a lot at receiver. Yeah. Tell, us, tell us about why why do that and how yeah. they did. And then Frank Heron, what, what's his status yeah. right now? Well, here's the deal. Uh, th that's all Matt stuff, you know, and uh, he wants to create mismatches. And, you know, we put these guys in a position where we call the F position. And they can do a, a variety of things. The F position could be a tight end. It could be a wide receiver. It depends on the play. And uh, we, we put those guys out there to create mismatches or create another hole in the line of scrimmage to get the safety out of the box. That's why he does it. With Frank Heron, obviously Frank Heron did not play uh, last week. Uh, Frank Heron is going to be on a week-to-week -week basis. Um, he's not ready to play right now. Uh, and he's not cleared to play. And I don't know when he's going to play. Coach. To your left. 
obviously you, you want to always respect your opponent going against Chattanooga, but is this one of those games where you could try to play those freshmen a little bit more, uh, especially in Tiger Stadium? Yeah, here, here's, here's the challenge of this week, okay, is uh, focus in on the task at hand, get our team ready, get our team ready for a battle, and we've all been in these games where you can overlook your opponent, and it turns out to be a battle. So we're not playing anything but a battle. Obviously, if things go the way we want them to in, in, in any game, just like you saw last week, we're putting it in the freshman. We will play the freshman, but only when it's time. We're not going into the game saying we're not playing this guy, we're not playing this guy. We're going guns are loaded to win the football game, whatever it takes. Hey, Coach, um, um, you, you mentioned earlier that you thought that any time you get over 25 carries, it's a little too much. Is that a conversation that you've had with Darius? Have you guys talked about what an appropriate workload looks like for him this year? <laughs> hey, he wants 70. <laughs> I mean, that, that won't be a good conversation. But, you know, what? We, we talk about it, Matt and I and Tommy and I, and we'll take the guys and stuff like that. And, look, I'm not saying he'll never get over 25. Well, there might be a game where we need him to get more. But we don't, we do not want to wear them out, and uh, that's why we use it in recruiting. We want to rotate our backs. Tommy has done a tremendous job. I have all the faith in Daryl. I have all the faith in Clyde and Nick Brosette is coming along. We have a couple of guys getting healthy, so we want to rotate our backs. We don't want them to carry the whole load. Over here. Uh, so obviously, we're not sure um, how much your personal philosophy towards accountability and discipline has to do with these players and. I understand if you don't want to get into that, but I was curious if you could describe what is your philosophy on accountability and discipline, right. flexible versus strict, and, and other, what in your lifetime in football led you to believe that the way yeah. you do it now is the right way? Well, obviously we have team rules. I mean, that's, we have team rules, that's it. We have team rules. If you break the team rule, you pay a price. And uh, that's it. We bring guys in. We... We counsel them, we talk to them, uh, we give them help in, a, help in a lot of areas that they need help. We're there for them. But once they cross the line, they have to play, face a penalty. And uh, that's what we do. Coach, on the left, uh, it's tough to improve off of 14 and 17, but where is there room for improvement for Danny? Well, we want to, we want to hit the long ball. We want to be consistent in hitting the long ball. Um, his play-action pass was great. Obviously, there's going to be a rush. It's going to come. He's going to have to avoid the rush, make decisions. He's going to get hit. He didn't get hit at all. He's got to shake it off and make a play. And uh, the, the competition as we grow is going to get stiffer. I think the thing with Danny is we all have confidence in him. But everybody is waiting to see him win the big game. And let me say this correctly. He'll never win the big game by himself. We'll do it as a team. But until he does that, I think that's, 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 that's going to be his mark. And he knows that. Ed, you mentioned that, that cheetah that y'all y'all would run. Uh, it, we saw a little bit of that with the two, just two defensive linemen down. Wow, we didn't see that a lot of that last year from, from Dave. Is that just because you have more of that outside linebacker? Yeah. Talk a little bit about that scheme. You know? Yeah, you know, last year we had, uh, we had Lewis Neal that could play four technique. And he could play six technique. So we didn't have to sub when we went to three, four to over. Now we don't have a guy that can do that. That is strong enough to play inside and is quick enough to play the quarterback. So we have to make a substitution. Now we have more outside linebackers so we can do that. I think Dave has done a good job of using our personnel. Uh, we need to be careful what we do on third down because a lot of times you want to put all fast guys in there. And we've done that. And you, sometimes you move a defensive end to – defensive tackle, and he gets stymied by a big guard because he just, he's just not used to playing in there. So we're very careful what we do. But certain situations, we're going to put four fast guys in there and let them go. How much agency does uh, Etling have between choosing pass run at the line of scrimmage in this Kansas? Every play. Every play he has a choice. Every play he has a choice of where to run the ball, what to do, and could check to the pass. Every play. Ed, the opponent didn't, I guess, dictate it this week, but last year was a lot more nickel. Um, Corey Thompson is consistently one of the yeah. 11 best guys on the field. I just, how, how do you look at that going forward? Yeah, we, we're still anticipating a lot more nickel this year. That's just the way the league is. And uh, we rarely see 21 personnel. 
was, I think we played 75 to 80 percent nickel last year. We're probably going to do the same this year on first down. Over back here, just quick on Miles Brennan. I know he got a few snaps in, um, and there may be more opportunities for him down the road. Uh, could you just maybe give us your evaluation of him and your eagerness to see more? He's been excellent. Been excellent all camp. Uh, there were some scrimmages out there that he was one of the best players on the field. But he wasn't ready, and he's still a young boy, a young man growing up. And we want to let him grow into the offense. It was his first time, you know, think about this. He's walking to the Superdome and taking snaps for the Tigers. That was a big deal for him, but he handled it well. I thought the way he threw the pass, the dump pass to 22, he read the linebacker perfect. You could see him read the linebacker. The linebacker stuck. He dumped it to 22, first down. And uh, he's smart. He knows his reads. He can throw the football. Uh, he has the grasp for the offense right now. He's learning. He's going to grow. Hopefully we can get him a lot of experience this year. Uh, but we have to see how the game goes. Coach, towards the back end of last year, D. Anderson was making some catches and yeah. some plays. Looked like he was going to emerge as one of your new mm -hmm. wideouts. What what has held him back? Or? He's been out with an injury all camp. He has not practiced yet. He has not practiced one time in camp. He's been out with an injury all camp, and I don't know if he's going to be back this week. So. It, it, the same question, uh, but a different player instead of D. Cy Martin, we haven't seen him at practice. He, he yeah. kind of in the same boat there. What? Yeah, Cy Martin will be um, will be practicing today. I do believe he's practicing today. He should be practicing today. Yeah.